calories. Eat a lot of them, you get fat, right? That's why everyone is so fat today, because of all the calories we eat. It's true, eat more calories than you burn and you will gain weight, no doubt about it. But is that really the cause behind the meteoric rise in obesity? If it's true that simply upping your calories will make you fat, then it should be easy to make someone fat by increasing their calories, right? Well, lucky for us, scientists have done this exact experiment dozens of times, forcing people to eat so many calories that they can't fit anymore down their throat. Only one issue, it doesn't work. Seriously, it doesn't work. Now, how exactly is that possible? And if all those extra calories don't make you fat, then what exactly does? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna go through these experiments, see what they find, and what they uncover about how we actually became so fat. Now, these are called overfeeding studies. Basically, you take a group of people who's weight stable, Typically, they're relatively thin, they're healthy, and you see how much they're eating at baseline, and then you give them way more calories than they need in order to maintain their weight or maintain their current energy or calorie intake. And this isn't just like, oh, 100 calories here, 200 calories there, no. A lot of times they are giving these people thousands of extra calories a day for weeks, if not months, in some of these experiments. Now, there was a recent review paper looking at all these different experiments over the last 70 years or so, and the results are not at all what you would expect. In fact, it's very common to hear that 3,500 calories equals a pound of fat. If you eat 3,500 calories above your maintenance, then you will gain a pound of fat, and if you go under by 3,500 calories, then you'll lose a pound of fat, except that's not at all what they found in this study. Now, they did show that people do gain weight by eating extra calories. However, it's way less than what was predicted by this simple 3,500 number. And this was also incredibly consistent among these studies. For example, eating 50,000 calories in excess would be predicted to make you gain around 14 pounds of fat if we use that 3,500 number that we hear so often. But in reality, people only gained about half of that weight, under seven pounds of fat. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, that's fine. Maybe the 3,500 number is wrong, but they still obviously gained weight. So what are you talking about? Well, that's the thing is that these people were forced to eat a lot more food than they otherwise would. And then when the experiment stopped, the scientists would track them once they went back to their normal diets, just eating based off of intuition, what they wanted to eat, not what they felt like they were forced to eat. And across all these studies, they found that it was very consistent that once people stopped doing the experiment, the weight would come off without a second thought. So in other words, you can try to fatten someone up for weeks or even months on end just with food, just with extra calories, and it's not enough to make them obese permanently. Sure, people can gain extra weight in the short term, but the body has correction mechanisms in place in order to get them back to their so-called ideal body weight. In fact, in this paper, they quote one study, the Vermont study, saying that after gaining 10 to 25% of their body weight by overfeeding, the volunteers in the study were reported to lose weight rapidly and return to near baseline over several weeks. And this is what's so important to understand. There's a difference between gaining some extra weight for a couple weeks and being chronically obese like what we see in so many people nowadays. Yes, you can just gain some weight by eating a lot more calories, but the chronic state of obesity requires other factors to be in place beyond just calories. People who are chronically obese tend to gain more weight per calorie consumed and have a much harder time losing it. Whereas people that are relatively lean and healthy, they can eat above their maintenance amount of calories and it doesn't really affect them in the long run. Here's an example in one study showing that overfeeding by around 1,000 calories a day for around 100 days resulted in about five pounds of fat being gained. But then when the scientists checked in with them four months later after they stopped the experiment, they all lost the weight entirely and they didn't even need to think about it. And there's a couple different reasons why that is the case. One of the main reasons is that your body should be able to correct for the amount of calories you overate by simply under eating that same amount of calories going forward. And we can see that in these studies that after people get forcefully fed for all this time, they naturally just start eating less. In this paper, for instance, after being force fed for several weeks, people ate around 475 calories per day less 
without even thinking about it. Most notably, they ate nearly 50 grams of fat under what they were prior. And this might seem miraculous, but it's really not. This is the exact mechanism in place that your body should have working properly. We also find in these studies that more calories does not necessarily mean more weight gain because there's a ton of variation in how much weight someone will gain for a given calorie load. In another review of these studies, the authors are quoted as saying, the range of weight gain between the twin pairs was staggering, anywhere from 4.3 to 13.3 kilograms, with no correlation between the total energy ingested and weight gain. So like I said before, there's more to the story than just eating more means gaining more weight, and then you just keep that weight forever. And if you are someone that's been struggling with persistent weight gain or really any other health issue and you want some targeted support, we'd be happy to help you at PRISM. PRISM is our consultation platform where we have multiple different practitioners you can work with. We do in-depth research, we do lab testing, we do extensive reports, targeted diet and supplement coaching, really anything that you could need in order to optimize your health and well-being. We've already served over 500 clients and we're getting some great results every single day. So if you need any personalized help with your health, be sure to click here, book a free call, and we'd be happy to get you started. Now, what exactly is it that determines whether or not you will keep on this extra fat if you have in fact overfed? Well, one of the big things is your metabolism. In fact, another study looked at this and saw that the amount of fat that was retained after six months of overfeeding was directly correlated to the deviation from predicted sleep metabolic rate at baseline. So what does that mean? That means that the more that your metabolism increased during your sleep, so in other words, you weren't even doing anything, this wasn't activity, this was literally while you were sleeping how much energy you were burning, the more energy that someone was burning while they were sleeping at rest, the less likely they were to retain that extra weight from being overfed. The same is true for the 24 hour energy expenditure or how much energy you burn throughout an entire day, your total daily metabolism. Again, we see this same correlation. The more that the metabolism increases after being overfed, the more likely you are to lose that fat after the overfeeding. So this is one of the biggest reasons why a lean healthy person can just eat extra calories and then just burn them off. If you are in fact healthy and your metabolism is working properly, then you should be able to just burn off extra energy without thinking about it. You shouldn't just chronically store it as fat. The issue comes in when your metabolism is not working properly and your body does retain all of those extra calories for long periods of time. Another study here showed a similar effect. They showed a tenfold variation in weight gain for a given calorie load. That's insane. That means that some people would eat the same amount and gain under a pound, whereas other people in that same study would gain 10 pounds. But what was the key determinant that they saw in those people that gained the extra weight versus the people who kept it off without even trying. In this study, it came down to non-exercise activity. So this is basically your body subconsciously making you move more without you even thinking about it. Typically we hear, you know, eat less, move more, meaning force yourself to eat less and force yourself to go out on walks and exercise more. But in these studies, we actually see the opposite. We see eat more, move more. We see people being overfed and then their bodies adaptively start to move more in order to help rid that extra energy. But again, if your body did not have that response, you're more likely to retain the weight. Some of the best studies to illustrate these points are in these old studies looking at spontaneous versus experimental obesity. And this experimental obesity, they basically tried to get people to mimic all of these same features as someone who's obese just by overfeeding them. They stated that not all of our subjects gained the amount of weight predicted from the calories they took. This was especially marked when the calories were provided as carbohydrate. That means if people were overfed on fat as opposed to carbs, they were more likely to retain the extra weight. And if we look at this table one right here, we can see some of the key differences between experimental and spontaneous obesity. And what I want you to focus on here is the caloric balance section. So if you look at spontaneous obesity, the calories required to maintain the obese state was 1300 kilocalories per meter squared. Whereas in experimental obesity, they required over double that amount of calories in order to just maintain their weight gained. So that tells you that people who are obese in the natural world who become fat just by living their normal lives aren't 
actively overfeeding themselves, they require significantly fewer calories in order to maintain that obese state. They also found that in the fat tissue, not only were the size of the cells that retain fat larger, they actually multiplied in the spontaneous group. They had more fat cells, not just larger ones, but in the experimental group where they just tried to overfeed them, they did not gain more fat cells in the process. And this is critically important in the difference between someone who is naturally fat and someone who isn't. The number of fat cells that you have seems to be determined early in your life and basically predisposes you to being fat for the rest of your life. As I mentioned before, overfeeding with fat seems to be worse than overfeeding with carbohydrate. In this study here, they looked at the alterations in thyroid hormone during overfeeding with either carbs or with fat. And during the carbohydrate overfeeding portion of the study, the researchers stated increased calories were required to maintain weight after gain over and above that predicted from their increased size. However, with fat overfeeding, they stated no change in the caloric requirement to maintain weight or concentrations of T3, that's thyroid hormone, was found after long-term fat overfeeding. So basically what they're saying is if you try to keep someone fat by overfeeding them on carbohydrate, it took a lot more calories than it did if you were trying to do so with fat. Of course, the fat that they used in this study was corn oil. Another study here showed the same thing. Carbohydrate overfeeding produced progressive increases in total energy expenditure, resulting in 75 to 85% of excess energy being stored, whereas fat overfeeding had minimal effects on fat oxidation and total energy expenditure, leading to storage of 90 to 95% of excess energy. So there you have it the more fat that's in the diet being overfed, the more likely it is to be stored. Whereas with carbohydrate, it's much more difficult to do that. And I've done an entire video on the approach of doing a very high carb and lower fat diet for fat loss. And you can check that out here if you're interested. Another very important video that I did was on leptin, which explains possibly the majority of these findings. Basically what leptin does is it's a hormone that is released from your fat cells in proportion to how large they become. And then it goes to the brain in your hypothalamus and it signals a few things. First of all, it signals satiety. It makes you stop eating once your fat cells are full enough. It also increases your energy expenditure by increasing your thyroid hormone and by browning your fat. So it basically makes your fat more likely to generate heat and to produce energy as opposed to just being this reservoir of energy. So you can imagine that people that were overfed and then they started eating 500 calories a day less just spontaneously, their leptin was working properly. However, people whose energy expenditure did not increase with the overfeeding, they probably had something called leptin resistance. And I dove deep into leptin levels and leptin resistance in terms of weight loss in this video here. I've also done a video here about thyroid hormones and how to optimize your thyroid function, which is incredibly important when it comes to overfeeding as your body should be able to ramp up your thyroid hormone activity in response to extra calories in order to help burn off that extra energy. But if your thyroid is not working properly, then you're more liable to gain extra weight. And there are a lot of other factors as well that I've covered both here on YouTube and on Twitter and on Instagram and our content over there. So I would definitely suggest that you check that out. I'll make sure to include some links to relevant content in the description below. But the bottom line is that your body, if you are healthy, should have no problem dealing with extra calories, even if you're overeating for days, weeks, or even months at a time. Extra calories alone is not enough to make you obese, but extra calories combined with all these other issues certainly is. Now, if you're interested in getting any lab work done, I would highly suggest you go to Revelation Diagnostics, which is our lab testing company. You don't even need a doctor. You can just go to the website, pick out whatever labs you want, add them to your cart, and then you can go to the lab nearest you to get your blood drawn. And if you wanna do that, you can use code ANALYZE at checkout for 10% off. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.